most insurance agents hire me because they don't even know where to begin. They don't know what types of accounts to call on, what should be on their prospect list. They don't know exactly what to say, what their messaging is, what their script ought to be. Even frankly, what is their overall differentiation compared to every other single competitor out there in the marketplace, let alone even what their 12-month time on a services ought to be. Does that describe you? Do you have a, a struggle yourself on trying to figure out where to even start? Well, if that is a problem for you, then I want you to stay tuned because in this podcast episode, we're going to talk about pre-prospecting. Everything that you do, even before you make your first call, send out your first email and so forth. This is laying the foundation pre-prospecting. This is where most agents fail. But if you do these three things that we're going to talk about in this podcast episode, you are going to be so much further ahead of your competition. So stay tuned. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Millionaire Insurance Producer Podcast. My name is Charles Specht, and I am glad to be with you today. We're coming to the end of 2023. And if you're like most people who are coming to the end of a year, you start to reflect on how did it go, what worked, what didn't work, as well as looking for the future on what it is that you need to do in order to actually start having the type of success that you want and that you know you are capable of achieving. So today on this podcast, we're going to start talking about laying the foundation. In my permission sales framework, this is step one. This is where everything begins. This is module one, part one of the entire framework, laying the foundation. I might refer to this as pre-prospecting. This is everything that you need to do before you even start to begin the prospecting, before you start reaching out to people, before you go to any networking events, before you make a cold call, all of that. We have to kind of go through it in a very systematic way on figuring out what it is that we go after, what's our overall takeaway, what's our carrot, what's our script, what's our differentiation, what's our 12-month timeline of services, and so forth. Because if you don't know why the insured should fire their agent and hire you, then you're likely not going to win the business. I believe that with all my heart. If you can't figure out why you are different or better or why the insurance should do business with you rather than the incumbent agent, if you don't know how to articulate it, the insured is never going to be able to figure it out for him or herself. They are not in the insurance business. Insurance to them is like a foreign language. They don't get it and so forth. So we have to be able to figure that out. Why is this interesting? Why is this necessary? Frankly, so far today, I think I have like five people signed up who have set up a complimentary telephone call with me to just begin talking about it. Um, the very first one I did today, the guy ended up coming on as a, as a coaching client, one-on-one -on -one coaching. And essentially what he said, and we didn't even like get into it. He said, Charles, he goes, I've been an agency owner for about four years. I don't really know what to go after. I'm basically a generalist. I don't really have any, any major service. I don't even know who to call on. I don't even know what to say. My prospecting isn't right. And therefore, I'm thinking really small. I'm not thinking bigger. I have a small book of business because I don't know really what my differentiation is. I don't have a timeline of services. And I essentially said this. I let him vent. I let him talk. And then I said, welcome to the club. Because about 80 to 85% of all the people who ever hire me or contract with me to become the chief sales officer for their agency are dealing and struggling with the exact same thing. Nobody knows where to start. Nobody knows what to start with, where to begin. Frankly, most insurance agents, they get hired, and then the agency leadership is like, great. You're hired. You got a license. Go sell some business. You've got three to six months to make it happen. If you don't become successful, we're going to fire you. And I feel that is a major detriment to our overall insurance industry as a whole. We need to be better than that. And I feel that when this, how this works out in pre-prospecting, this is the agency's responsibility. 
Yes, producers are ultimately responsible for his or her own unique success. But this is the agency's responsibility to have it figured out. What's the differentiation? What's the service? What's the 12-month timeline of services? What types of business are we going to have our producers go after or not go after? What's the geographic territory? What's the carrot? What's the script? What's the thing that we're offering in exchange for a 30-minute meeting? I mean, this is the agency's responsibility. And if an agency doesn't have it, that's your own fault. That's why you're small. That's why your book of business is small. That's why you're not growing. That's why you're struggling. That's why your wheels are spinning, because you don't have traction. You don't even know where you have started from to where to begin. This is it. Pre-prospecting. Like I told that gentleman earlier today, this is where about 80 to 85% of people come to me because they don't even know where to begin. And I said, which is great from the standpoint that at least you understand it. You see it. You see that you're struggling. You see that you don't understand where to even go next. Great. You're seeing it. Now we're going to do something about it. And I really feel that when I'm working with an agent, and particularly this situation, for example, just using him, he's a small agency owner. I actually feel we're going to be able to get his book of business to a million dollars of commission or more in about three to four years. We're going to be able to do it. This isn't going to be too difficult. I know what carriers he has access to. I know where his geographic location is. It's just a matter of now trying to figure out what type of business we're going to go after what, so that we're picking business that really isn't service intensive and so forth. It's just a matter of doing it. After this, after we lay the foundation, comes the prospecting. And that's where we kind of have to really make sure that the rubber is hitting the road, that the producer is doing the work that they need to do. But that's something the producer has to do. This first part, lay the foundation, agency owner, this is on you. This is your responsibility. You have to take control of your own company, your own agency. And if you are trying to bring on people and you don't even have a recipe for success, shame on you. It's your fault. Your fault. But that doesn't mean it has to stay that way. It doesn't mean it has to stay that way. We can now create something that is a replicatable solution to every single person who's going to become a producer at your agency. We can do this step by step. The first step is now talking what we call lay the foundation. This is the first part in my sales framework, my permission sales framework. And it talks about things like figuring out your micro niche, what size of account you're going after, what's the geographic territory, what is going to be the ultimate carrot that you have to offer. Uh, all of these things, including even the creation of your 12-month timeline of services. This is where it starts. Now, again, this is my permission sales framework. So I have outlined these things in five different modules across the board. Pre-prospecting, prospecting, first appointment, pre-proposal, proposal. All the various things that you have to do from A to Z, from the beginning to the end, in order to win the business. There's a lot of different things that you have to do in this prospecting area. This is where I focus. This is my level of genius. This is where I spend my time. I am not the kind of guy out there who figures out what kind of CRM your agency should have. That's somebody else. I am not the guy who figures out what your account managers ought to be doing or not doing. I can help with that. I just don't want to do it. That's not my area of genius. My area of focus on what I feel I'm pretty good at is prospecting. From the very beginning, figuring it all out to the point of actually asking for the sale. That's where I spend my time with insurance agents and agency owners and producers. This is what sets us up for success. The first part, let's talk about it. Your most profitable micro niche. I call it micro niche for a reason. Micro means we go smaller or we're narrowing it. We're narrowing our focus into something particular. It's not an industry. It's more of a niche, a micro niche. An industry is like construction. A micro niche would be dialing it down to something like roofing contractors or dialing it down to something like tilt-up concrete construction, or dialing it down to small home builders. It is a smaller, narrowed focus underneath the umbrella of a larger industry. Do you know what you are going to prospect? If you don't, then you're really missing step one. You're missing step one. I mean, how can you achieve success if you don't even know where to beginning? 
to begin. How can you get to your destination and create a, a map of left, rights, and all that if you don't even know where you're starting from? You have to know where you're starting from in order to get to where you want to go. Figuring out your micro niche is absolutely critical. Most insurance agents are generalist, quasi-generalist, jack-of-all-trades. They are not the kind of people who write a lot of business, who make a lot of commission, who end up making a lot of money every single year for themselves. They are the types of people who maybe can pay their bills, but not much more than that. That's what a generalist is. A micro niche producer is somebody who understands what they do. And please listen to this. Please listen to this. I don't know what you're doing. Come back. Listen to this. A micro niche producer not only knows what he or she is going after, but specifically knows what they are not going after. A micro niche producer takes all the things that are available out there in the entire marketplace and says, all of that, I am never even going to contact. I am never going to prospect on that. I am never going to give them a call. I'm never going to send them an email. I would never expect any of those to be my clients. And that is a huge list. Whereas the micro niche producer says these one or two little micro niche areas, these two ponds, I'm going to be the flat out biggest fish in these ponds. I'm going to be the go to insurance agent in the space in these two areas. Figure out your geographic territory. Is it all the United States? Is it just your state? Is it the Western coast? Is it Canada? Where's your geographic territory? You need to figure out all of these things in regards to your micro niche. Your micro niche is going to be something that you plan to brand yourself in, that you are going to be focusing exclusively in regards to your prospecting. It's going to be for LinkedIn, Instagram, everything, your entire branding, brochures, website. You're going to have a page on the agency website that's going to be focused on this, collecting um, email addresses from your various prospectus, prospects in exchange for maybe a, a free ebook, whatever it is, a video series that teaches on a major solution to a problem they have, whatever it is, you are going to be so focused in your micro niche area that because you are so focused in this micro niche area that everything else is not at all a focus. The problem with most insurance agents is that very thought of micro niching scares them to death because they think that they are somehow limiting themselves to not writing as much business because I'm now focusing only in this small little like pond or two, maybe two little micro niches. Well, I, I ask you, have you been writing as much business as you want? Are you writing as many clients as you possibly want? Are you writing the size of the clients that you really want? Are you building your book of business? Are people just coming to you because you are the obvious choice of which agent to do business with? I would suspect probably not. If you're coming across as a generalist and you have nothing special, your prospect is not seeing you as anything special. Therefore, you are a commodity. They'll allow you to quote. They're just not going to do business with you. They'll pat you on the head. Thank you very much for coming. You provided some really good numbers to us this year. We're definitely going to give you another shot next year. Stick around. We're just going to stay with our current agent this year, but really thank you for your time. Hey, if that's what you want, keep doing it. If that's the result that you want and you're happy with it, then you don't need the Millionaire Insurance Producer Podcast. That's for sure. So please just hang up and go subscribe to the generalist insurance agent out there, and then you can continue on down that road. But that's not what we're focused on here. The micro niche insurance producer makes a lot more money, at least I would say 50% more than a generalist. And by that, I mean your book of business is going to be significantly bigger than a generalist insurance agent. Micro niche producers also tend to write bigger accounts. They also tend to get more broker of record letters, which means they have to go through a quoting process less often than somebody who is a generalist, jack of all trades. Micro niche producers also tend to get more referrals. They tend to have more opportunities for speaking events in places like associations. They also tend to get endorsed by associations, national trade associations, more often than a generalist because they are seen as the go-to agent. They're the ones who create a service specific for that micro niche. They just tend to be much more professional. Question for you. What's your micro niche? What? is your micro niche. 
you're going into 2024 now. By the time you guys listen to this, it's going to be the beginning of 2024. What is it that you are going to be prospecting going forward? If you don't know, please just stop wasting your time right now. Stop doing anything else. Just, I don't know, wake up for the next four or five days, go to a coffee shop, go to a cottage out in the middle of a mountain, do something by figuring out what it is you will focus on. Because if you're focused on everything, you're not focused on anything. You got to have a micro niche. Figure it out. What are some micro niches that I would go after as just as examples? All right. I'm just going to throw out a few different examples. Okay. There's a, there's like 10,000 things you can go after. Okay. Here's just a few. I would seriously consider furniture stores. There's a lot of furniture stores. I could do that on a local basis, but I could also take it national. It's one of those things where you can just do a lot of them. They're not huge accounts, at least many of them aren't huge accounts, but they are significant enough in their premium where you can write a lot of them and therefore make a lot of money. They have typically lots of property values, uh, workers' compensation. They might even have some delivery exposure, so they've got a few different large trucks. Um, you're going to get some decent premium from that standpoint, and you're also going to have the ability to be able to write this with some good standard carriers, like some regional carriers. I would tell you, start figuring out some of the regional carriers that you're trying to do business with and then go after some classes of business that they really want. I think furniture stores would be a really good place in which to start. That would be something I would consider. I would personally also consider law firms. I think that I would really enjoy doing law firms. Um, I have said it before. I'll say it again. I am not the kind of insurance agent who could write farms or ranches. That's just not my thing. I'm not going to go out in boots, cowboy boots, and I'm just not going to really have a lot of rapport with the typical farmer. That's just not me. But when I go to a boardroom, when I go to go see a business owner, I'm in a conference room, I can shine in those areas. So I know that law firms would be a really good place that I could probably write a fair amount of business. Again, it's something that I can focus on in my specific state, and then I can branch out whenever I'm ready. It's going to be standard business, depending upon what type of law that each of the law firms are practicing, but it can be some pretty good premium. Especially also if your agency or if the type of an account you want to go after also has a um, employee health benefits focus. So I would probably, if I was at an agency that also did health benefits, I would probably look for a class of business that was decent premium, like, for example, the law firms. And then, therefore, we can also then do the employee health benefits or we can broker over the employee health benefits. If I'm getting paid benefits, if I'm getting paid commission, on, I'm going after something where I can just bring in my benefits team and we, we broker it over and I just start getting paid on some of that stuff as well. I mean, again, isn't there a reason why we start in a certain place? If there's not a reason why we're starting in a certain place, then really, we are just a generalist who is throwing mud up against the wall to see what sticks. That is not a pro. That's an amateur. And so I would maybe do furniture stores. I like it because it's not really even service. It's not in service intensive. I can write a ton of that business. And unless like they buy a new store or have a claim, what else do you do? I mean, there's really not too much to do. They don't need a bunch of certificates. There's not probably a, a ton that's needed in regards to loss control and so forth. It's just a matter of maintaining the relationship. I like that. I like law firms. I would probably focus on one of those two. Certainly, if I was to ever sell insurance again, which I don't really ever plan on selling insurance again. But if I was, if I was a producer, or certainly if I was an agency owner of a small to medium-sized agency, I can almost guarantee you that I would be doing something in one of those two spaces. Now, even like say uh, uh, going into like furniture store, there's a lot of different things that can qualify under stores. There's a lot of different micro niches inside stores. You can write a lot of business inside stores. It just kind of depends upon what type of store you're going to go after. But that's what I would do. Again, just to kind of put this in a parenthesis, I would say go to your regional carriers. They want to focus on that sort of small to middle market. They're really going to be competitive at what they do. Find the certain areas, the needle in the haystack, where they just flat out shine, where they are the most competitive in that particular category. 
And the nice thing about working with a good regional carrier is that they're probably not licensed in all the states, but they might be licensed in like nine or 13 of them. And so you can make this thing like a semi-national really, really quickly by just going after the right type of prospects. But personally, I would probably start with furniture stores and then law firms. Now, if I would go back to something maybe that I used to do in construction, I would potentially go after something in construction. Um, I did a lot of subcontractors in the past, but I think that maybe I would do general contractors, maybe home builders, maybe I would do either commercial or residential, I'm not quite sure, but I think that I would focus on general contractors and my service that I would offer to them would be some kind of additional insured certificate compliance program where I am looking at all of the certificates for all of their subcontractors to see if they are being compliant contractually and if they offer the right kind of coverages that the general contractor needs in regards to the AI cert and the right types of coverages on the subcontractor's policy. Why do I know this is helpful? It's huge. It's huge. Most general contractors have no idea how insurance works. They get a certificate of insurance from the subcontractor. They have no idea what it covers, what it doesn't, if it's the right form. And frankly, I've seen many times where the roofing contractor gets a certificate of insurance to the general contractor. It's the wrong AI form. And the subcontractor who thought he had coverage for roofing has an exclusion for residential roofing. It's pretty amazing how messed up it can get in the construction space. Well, guess what? If you have an area of expertise in regards to understanding that, isn't that a place where you could just flat out dominate your sector? How many decent sized general contractors do you need before you'll have a multi-million dollar book of business? Not too many. So that might be an area that I would focus on. Even if I did focus on construction, maybe subcontractors, I would likely focus on, I would say high hazard. I like concrete. Some of my largest clients have been subcontractor concrete clients. I mean, I never had like just, you know, $500,000 commission clients. That was never my thing. I think the most I ever had for a commission for one client was like $120,000 of commission. And it happened to be a concrete subcontractor, a decent size uh, sub. Why? Because their general liability is expensive. They usually have a lot of vehicles and their work comp's pretty high too. And so I had a, a number of them who were like 20, 50, 70, $90,000 of commission. There's just a lot. So maybe I would do concrete. I would definitely focus on higher hazard because there's fewer carriers that want to write it. So I might do something like roofing contractors or framing contractors, or maybe I become the go-to expert for all exterior window washing companies. Why? Because there's a height exposure for every single one of them. Most of the carriers on the workers' compensation don't want anything to do with it. Therefore, there's a very limited number of carriers. I can control that marketplace. And if I have access to all the carriers, now it just becomes a matter of whether or not they pick Charles. And I feel that that is a really good place in which to play. If you can control it and it just becomes a matter of whether they pick you or somebody else, that's a very strong place to play, especially if you've got the right carrot, the right script, the right timeline of services and so forth. So the, the micro niche area, it can be in so many different things. Water well drillers, firework manufacturers, uh, you know, tri-state trucking companies. I mean, you can write anything, manufacturing companies. You can focus. I had worked one agent who his entire focus was on working with companies that um, imported and exported to China. And so there's not too many carriers that really want to focus on that. And they've got, you know, very sort of restrictive language in their policies about what they will and will not cover, both from a claims as well as legal standpoint, when you are importing and exporting goods from China. Okay, so there's a great number of areas in which you can focus in your micro niche. I would say pick a micro niche and have your geographic territory large enough so that you have at least 600 decent accounts to begin prospecting. I would like to see that number closer to 1,000, but 600 for me, I would say, is a bare minimum. That just kind of puts me at an average of around 50 per month that are coming up for renewal that month. I'm working on a three-month basis. That means I'm working on about 150 accounts at any given time. I can call on those 150 in a few hours. I can send them out emails. I can do walk-in visits. I'm going to end up getting a lot of appointments and write a lot of business. But you got to have a decent number in which to focus on. 
And I would tell you, if you can't find, say, at least 601, that's why I would tell you, you could pick two different micro niches, have them completely separate from one another, where you can get at least maybe a 1,000 prospects to deal with. You can focus in two primary micro niche areas. Don't do three or more. Do two. One's better, but two you can handle. Okay, two you can handle. But I would say you have to start there. If you don't even know where you're starting from, just understand, you'll never be able to get to a place where you feel like you've actually had success. You can't define it. You can't define it. And so the first part of my permission sales framework is laying the foundation. I call it pre-prospecting. There's a bunch of different things that fall under the laying the foundation area. The primary one is picking your micro niche. Your most profitable micro niche is fairly easy to figure out. It just becomes a matter of you spending the time to figure it out. I also had another call this morning with um, a client of mine. I've been working with her for several years now uh, from one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as in my mastermind. And you know what? It's taken her a little bit of time, a little bit of trial and error to figure out which one to go after. And she's now going after a class of business that I just feel like is a winner. I just feel like this next year is just going to be like on fire for her. I can see it all coming together. I see her doing her branding in this certain area. And I just feel like it's clicking. She now has kind of a good feel for the marketplace. What she has to work on now is maybe a little bit more of the carrot, uncovering the biggest problem they're dealing with, and then helping the insured to see how you answer or provide a solution to that major problem in one of three ways. Peace of mind, saving time, saving money. Once you can start to put together your correct um, scripting messaging to answer those three problems, saving time, peace of mind, and saving money, your prospect is going to see why you are the better choice. And for her and the area in which she's going after, I think she's going to have like a $250,000 commission year if she really gets all these things figured out. I just see everything kind of coming together. I'm really excited for her, but it has taken a little bit of time to get there. She did some trial and error. She had to pivot a few times. Yep, we might figure out something to go after and it might not be a very good fit. Why? Because everybody has their own unique strengths and weaknesses. Every agency is different on what they can or can't do. Uh, they all have their unique appointments with the carriers. Geographic territory is also an issue. What kind of competitors you have in your local territory are also some issues to take into consideration. Just figuring out something to go after isn't sometimes the easiest thing to figure out. It does require some expertise. And so I will sort of leave you with this. I actually have this in the second module of my digital course called Millionaire Producer School. Millionaire Producer School. I sell it on my website. Go to permissiongroup.com. That's my website, permissiongroup.com. I sell it on the website. It's my entire sort of signature flagship course that teaches the entire broker of record letter process from start to finish. Millionaire Producer School. It costs about $297, but it will teach you everything. And the second module of that course is all about trying to figure out what type of business to go after and then ultimately determining which one it's going to be based upon all those factors. There's videos attached to it. There's some exercises that help you actually come down to the one or two main areas that you're going to focus on. Because again, once you have that dialed in, everything else becomes easier. And so if you're trying to figure it out, look, I do one-on-one -on -one group coaching. I am, I am retained by insurance agencies all the time. That's fine. Love to have that. But if you want to just sort of dive into it, I would say go to millionaireproducerschool.com or my main website, which is permissiongroup.com, and go look at my digital course, Millionaire Producer School. You'll have immediate access to it. You'll have all the access to the modules. There's even an example of the 12-month time out of services right there in the course for yourself so that you can see what it is, how to do it, how you can put it together, and it teaches the entire broker of record letter process from start to finish. I feel that that would be a great place for you to start, especially if you don't necessarily have all the funds to hire someone like me for one-on-one -on -one coaching, at least right up front. So the Millionaire Producer School would be a great place to start. Why? Because it starts with your foundation. Your most profitable micro niche, I would say, is probably one of the most important places to begin. And frankly, it's the area where I see the vast majority of insurance agents and agencies 
flat out drop the ball. I can't believe it when I think about how many agencies don't even know where to start, let alone the agents themselves. Certainly those agents who maybe, you know, had just like gotten in the business and they don't know where to start. I get that. But it's amazing even how many agents have been in the business for years now. And they're like, yeah, I've always been a generalist. I've always been spinning my wheels. And now I can see and now I understand why. It's because I didn't have any kind of a micro niche focus. And great, we're seeing it. You're seeing it. You're finally understanding what's the differentiation. Now, we have to make it happen. And if you're a professional insurance agent who's looking to grow your book of business to a $1 million mark of commission or more annually, then I would say check out the Millionaire Producer School digital course. It's going to give you the tools you need to begin getting to that next step. My name is Charles Specht. I am the president and CEO of Permission Network, where I teach and train insurance agents how to build a $1 million or more book of business through sign broker of record letters. This is the Millionaire Insurance Producer Podcast.